Hi software engineers, we're going to finish out the requirements unit for the class by actually talking about something that's kind of just adjacent to requirements and that is risk management. Why in the world are we talking about risk management now? Why didn't we talk about this back with the process stuff? Well, one of the major risks to a project are the requirements and the requirements change, but also you just got your teams and you are just getting started on the project and so it's a good time to now start talking about the risks that are inherent in software development. I mean, think about this. You've just started on a multi-week project, multi-month project, and you're building a piece of software you don't necessarily know a ton about. It's not like we've given you a lot of information. There's some information on the project page, but you have to do your own requirements. So you have to figure out exactly what it is that you need to build. Um, you theoretically don't know the other people on your team. You might or might not know them, or you've heard of them, or you're just now getting to know these people a little, a little bit more. Most of you have never done Django before. Some of you have never done Python before. So, how does that make you feel? And I don't, I, I really mean this truthfully. I want, you, I want you to pause for a moment. I want you to think, how does this make you feel? Are you thinking? I hope you're thinking. It's okay to have big feelings about this, as my, my daughter's kindergartner teacher might say. We have big feelings about things, and it can affect our performance. It can affect the way that we, that we interact with others. And you don't need to shy away from these feelings. You, you need to just think about it and accept it. I mean, some of you might feel excited. Some of you might be thinking, oh man, this is, this is, I've always wanted to learn more web development. I've wanted to learn stuff about Django. I've heard about this before. This seems really cool. Uh, some of you might be excited because, hey, maybe there's the person on your team. You're like, oh, I've heard about this person. They're super awesome. Or maybe I've, you know, I've always wanted to get to know new people. You know, you never know. You could also have the feeling of, oh my gosh, you put me with a bunch of people. I have no idea who they are. We are all trapped in our rooms or whatever. And it's COVID and I am super nervous about a project. That's okay. That's a a completely understandable, reasonable feeling to have. You know, we're all dealing with stuff right now. We're all dealing with the world. And that is going to have an effect on your performance in your courses. And it's going to have an effect on the way you work on these projects. I mean, you know, it's no secret we wanted these projects to have some sort of um, software for good mentality to it. Something that would help other people. And, and that can lead to more big feelings. So, you know, we're not trying to be mean by putting you on these teams with people you've never met, by uh, having you work on larger pieces of software you've never seen before. We're not trying to be mean by saying that, look, you have to figure out a lot of this on your own as far as the technical portion to some degree. But this is the reality of what software development is like. Um, people change jobs. People are not going to follow through with their responsibilities. Um, customers will change their minds. Your requirements will change. We're not going to do that to you. I used to do that in 3240. That got to be a little too mean. Um, things are going to happen that are out of your control that you have to learn to deal with, that you have to learn to accept and, and roll with it and try and still go forward and make the best product that you can or recoup whatever investment that your, co your company has made. So it's not easy. It isn't easy, and we recognize that. Now, as an individual, you can respond to your this risk profile, like the danger that um, someone on your team might drop between now and the drop deadline. It's probably going to happen. Some teams will go from four people to three people. What will that look like? How does that how does that happen? You know, how are we going to finish the software? Well, there's some different ways you can approach this. You could ignore this possibility completely, and if you're looking at the polar chart and your software hits in the very agile range, as in you're in the comfort area, um, you know, it's not very critical. Most people are experienced. Um, it's a small team. Maybe you do just ignore the, the potential risk and you say, well, if someone leaves and something happens and whatever, you know, just whatever that happened. You could be reactive to it. So basically you ignore it until it happens and then you try to go in and fight that fire. That's 
rarely the correct answer here um, because usually that generates more stress and more risk to a project. Or you can be proactive about risk. If you approach any software project, once you kind of know what's going on, you know who's on your team, you know what's, what, what's happening. If you approach that software project and say, what are the most likely things that can occur that could affect me completing this project su successfully and then come up with plans around it? If you can do that early and learn to do that early, then if something happens, you're in a much, much better position. Will things happen this semester? Yes. Will they happen to all the teams? No. Some teams, you'll go through the entire semester and everything is going to be hunky-dory, smooth sailing. But there's 300 students in this class and there's 75 teams. Some teams are going to have something happen. It's just the way it works. So how do you manage this? Well, there is the risk management cycle. And the idea is first, identify the risks. What are some things that could potentially happen? Someone could drop. Um, someone might not know Python at the beginning and has to learn Python. Um, someone could get sick. All these things are things that could happen. So identify those risks and then analyze them. Uh, what's the likelihood that some of these are going to happen? Um, do you know that... Um, Do you have a member of the team that has not been communicating early on? So maybe you think that, oh, the likelihood of them dropping might be higher. So maybe you start looking at that risk a little bit more closely. What's the cost of that happening? If someone drops the class, you have to redistribute the labor. Does someone have to do their document? Spoiler alert. If someone drops from your team, you just don't have the, you just don't have the DevOps document. That's the one that you drop first. So someone I have to move into a new position, but then whoever is DevOps just kind of, slides over that's the e it's the easiest solution in most cases but we'll talk about it if it if it happens then prioritize um is it more likely someone's going to drop the class or is it more likely that both professors are fired from the university and you have to figure out the entire class on your own probably it's more likely someone's going to drop the class um i haven't yet done something to get myself fired um so Two thumbs up right there. Uh, but then you prioritize, you know, which risks do you care about more? You plan. Can you gather more information? Um, if you think someone's going to drop, can you ping them and say, hey, hey, what's up? Haven't heard you from heard from you in a while. Want to make sure things are cool. You doing OK? Uh, ping me. Say, hey, Sheriff, I haven't heard from this student. Um, I'm the scrum master. I haven't heard from this student. Could you, you know, look into it for me? See if they're still enrolled, you know. Can you get more information? Then we mitigate. Are there ways of cutting high-risk items? Again, if we expect someone might drop, if we haven't heard from them, maybe you don't assign, maybe in your scrum meeting, you don't say, huh, here's the really, really tough feature. No one here wants to do it. Let's give it to the person who's not here. <laughs> and then they drop and then, you know, it's not being built. So maybe you, you, you plan a little bit differently. You mitigate the risk. If they drop, well, if they were working on the user interface or something like that, that's something that's more easily distributed. And then monitor. Constantly say, you know, if, if you're worried about this person dropping, check in with me every other week. Check in with them. Um, send them an email every once in a while. Um, that sort of thing. You know, try and monitor. So identify your risks. Analyze their likelihood of occurring. Prioritize which ones you should care about more. Plan for those risks. Try and gather as much infor information as you can. Mitigate the risk by moving activities away from the risk exposure area. And then monitor and see if you can figure out what's going to happen. So what are things that can, in, that can create risk in a project? Particularly in, in our project. Well, people. We already discussed that. People might ghost. People might drop. Whatever. People are risky. Just the truth. Size of the project. Many of you might not have built a piece of software this size. So you might be, you might have concerns about understanding where all the aspects of the code should go or how the components are going to work together. And that might require you to go do more reading or do some more tutorials to try and catch up on some of this material. Maybe you don't understand how Scrum works. Maybe you need to go and uh, read up more about um, just how the daily, uh, how a Scrum operates, um, what a product backlog is, all those, all those sorts of things. Um, 
technology and tools. You don't necessarily know how to use GitHub or Heroku or Travis. So you go off and do, do those things. Um, you go off and learn how to do those things. So you go look at, to, you look at the tutorials that we're going to post. Organizational or managerial. Um, you don't feel comfortable talking to me or to McBurney, perhaps, or to your TA. Um, you know, that's, that's potential risk. You may, if you don't feel comfortable coming to us when there's an issue, um, that can hinder things. Uh, one of the number one problems that I have um, when dealing with student teams is that we have the, the teams where there's, there would be the person on there that's the, oh, that person had a rough week, it's okay, I'll just take care of their job for them this week, and they keep doing that. And they do it until the end of the semester. And then I have a student come to me in tears because they've been like just burning the midnight oil. And then they're, they're like, but this other person didn't do any work and they're going to get the same grade as me. And, and I did all this. And, and I feel for those people. Absolutely. Because that person that did that is at their heart, a very good person. They, they, they want to help people out. They want to see the project succeed, but it's not tattletaling to come to me and say, Hey, this person is just not doing their stuff what do we do? Cause I, I can't, I just can't right now. I can't do their stuff and my stuff. So, um, try and find mechanisms to talk to the staff as necessary. Um, there are customer risks. We're not going to introduce those <laughs> intentionally into this process. So, but that would be things like the, the requirements changing. Uh, you could misestimate how much time it takes to do certain features. Totally makes sense. And then, you know, support for us doesn't really matter as much because you're not going to be supporting the software afterwards. So what is your risk profile? You, as a student in CS3240, what is your risk profile? I, I want you to go find like a blank Google document or something. And I want you to write down, I want you to take a moment and I want you to write down what are your top three risks? What are things that you are worried about this semester? What are things that worry you about, about allowing you to complete this project? And getting those written down, and then if you can, if you can look at those and say, what is that risk? Um, what is the cost if it occurs? You know, prioritize those risks. If you can go through this mental process with an intentionality, it'll help you kind of center yourself and feel better about what you are going to be going through this this semester with the, with the project or with this class in general. I mean, it's it's an online class. We have we have live meetings, but you know. This might be an instance where um, there are still things that make you nervous. So do, do truly pause the video, take a moment, look at the slide either here or, or go load the slide from the deck on the lecture notes. And what are your risks? What are the things you're worried about? Take a moment, go. Okay, you're back. You unpause the video now. If you need some thoughts, <laughs> um, based on, upon some surveys that were done, here are the top 10 ed risks to educational projects. Uh, number one, overriding other people's work. This is why we use Git. Um, so hopefully we are mitigating this risk pretty well. Lack of exposure with technology. You're using Django. You've never used it before. That's a risk. Overwhelmed by work in other classes. I mean, that one just kind of goes without saying. Um, finding times to meet. That is very challenging, depending on your class schedule and, and where you're at and where you're living and, and, and how your Zooming works. Uh, understanding the requirements. Hopefully this one's not as important uh, in, for us because you're not getting the requirements from the staff. You're getting the requirements from yourself, in a sense. Lack of team communication. You're not physically together, probably. I mean, you might go be on ground. Some of you, some of you are at home, but um, you're going to be relying on Discord. You're going to be relying on Zoom. Um, hopefully you're using the text channels. Hopefully you are communicating project organization. Who is responsible for what we try to help you with that, but you still are going to have to divide up who is building what amongst yourselves, uh, loss of team member dropping, not like, let's just go with dropping the class. Now uh, we discussed that already difficulty of integrating work from various team members. Uh, if someone goes and does the UI and someone else goes off and does the submission form, can you make them talk together? Uh, hopefully you are working in pairs as much as possible uh, to make sure that the code is working together. 
and too much planning, not enough work on the project. I, I'm not worried about this as much for, for our class in general, but that is something that you do have to worry about. So risk management. It's about um, intentionally analyzing your situation, recognizing where risk does exist in software projects, and then coming up with a plan. Figuring out what's the likelihood of the risk happening, how bad is it if it happens, what can I do to monitor that risk, and what can I do to, to minimize my risk exposure, to, minim to, to mitigate that risk. So if you can learn to do that for large projects, I, I think you'll find that it can help, it can help with anxiety, it can help with um, uh, your mental attitude going into a project, um, and just help you work better with other people. So think about that. Um, think about how that might work for you here in 3240 and, and maybe for the rest of the semester for your other classes. I hope you're doing well as always. Hope you're feeling well. Great to have you with me. Take care. Bye.